Hello and greetings. In our last video, Mindset One, we said that our mindset determines our mental attitude and the way we look at things and ultimately our behavior. That it's a collection of perceptions that help us to create a set of beliefs that we have about ourselves and the world around us. Now, accordingly, our mindset paints a worldview in 3D reality as a result of our experiences. So, moving along with that, the subconscious mind is where our behaviors and attitudes come from. It's the larger part of our mind that we can't really uh, readily access and has little surface connection with our daily routines. Our perceptions of reality, how we think about the world around us, and what we look for, uh, what we take for granted or accept as true, are all determined by what we believe, and those beliefs are held in the subconscious. This means that our perceptions are extremely important in determining our world. As such, perception is the basic unit of reality. Now, back to the topic of belief. A belief is just a thought that we think a lot, right? Uh, and it can be changed. So understanding that our perceptions of reality are determined by what we believe, it will follow that when we alter those beliefs, we also are going to alter the reality that we experience. This is because what we take to be true on the subconscious level, inwardly, what we believe, gives rise to the reality we experience consciously, which is outwardly. In other words, through our belief system, we're forming our own reality. This is because the subconscious mind can actually tap into the unseen world. And when I talk about the unseen world, I'm just talking about what the Bible calls the spiritual realm and what scientists call the quantum field or the ether. Now, as a result, our subconscious mind can access everything that you or me or you know anybody else would ever want to have, be, or know, because it, um, it all exists potentially in a wave state as part of that field. Now, the subconscious comes pre-programmed in a way at our physical birth, and it comes with a ton of stuff, you know, like instinct, for example. I mean, do you remember anybody teaching you how to blink? Well, it also gets programmed by our environment and everything in the environment mom dad neighbors conversations wildlife everything when we were kids and going directly into the subconscious to reshape how we think about ourselves and our future our world that's the only way to affect permanent lasting change in our lives however the subconscious mind can be very stubborn it is set in its ways in a way now as reflected in so many of us it is a creature of habit, and this means that it really loves to stay with us as it always has, meaning it loves to be in the familiar, right, to live in familiar territory, so to speak, and it does this um, because it doesn't like change, and trust me, you probably already know, it'll give you a thousand and one reasons why we shouldn't change, and it'll equally quickly provide you ready-made excuses about how we can push that change off indefinitely. <laughs> yeah, it really does not like change, even if it's good for us, because it sees change as a bad thing. It sees it as unfamiliar, or even worse, as unknown. You see, our brain, the frontal lobe in particular, is always scanning our outward environment for anything different from what we're used to so it can predict and project worst case scenarios for us. This is why change is so hard to do because our subconscious reality really likes its habitual living style. It likes being safe and it doesn't want to change simply because change usually doesn't feel very good and it's not readily predictable and it knows, as we all do, that we have to be ready for the worst possible outcome. Now, 
We all know if we're uh, ready for the worst possible outcome, no matter what happens, we're going to survive. That's why it does it. This is why positive thinking alone always fails at the subconscious level. But that's also why using affirmations can be effective somewhat because they speak to the subconscious, which is very, very powerful. Now, did you know that the subconscious is what controls about 95% of our lives? Our activities I'm talking about, right? Yeah, about 95% of our lives and hence our reality is subconsciously automated. That's where all the, uh, the heavy lifting, so to speak, is done regarding our day-to-day -day activities. Anyway, according to psychologists, we have between 60 and 75,000 thoughts a day, and about 95% of them are running in our subconscious all the time as if, well, not all the time, but most of the time, 95%, right? As if pre-programmed. This is because children from about the ages of two to seven operate mentally in alpha and theta states. Now, alpha is akin to a semi-hypnotic state. Uh, theta brain waves measured at like between four and seven hertz are the brain frequencies of the barely conscious states we experience just before we get to sleep or just after waking up. It's the fascinating border between uh, the conscious and the subconscious world and in a way, it's our gateway to learning, memory, and intuition. Because that's, that's where the two of them kind of meld together. In theta, our senses are withdrawn from the external world, and they're focused on signals that originate from within, from inside of us, right? And while in this state, theta state, children spend much of their time, a lot of it, mixing uh, with an imaginary world, Right? And they mix that with the outward real world. So they get a, uh, a mixture of, of both, which that's why they can take a broom and say it's a horse, right? <laughs> so anyway, during this time, while operating primarily from those states, we also learn thousands and thousands of rules for social contexts and stuff like that that we use for everyday you know, navigation of life. And because our mental state during this time... Um, the learning that we experience uh, is actually akin to being programmed by an outside source, which I've mentioned before. So how can we actually change? Well, gaining access to the subconscious mind is most easily done just prior to falling asleep. And when we go to sleep, our conscious mind begins to shut down as our subconscious mind starts to take over. It starts to operate at a level that's much more conducive to suggestion. Now, we don't need to get into specifics, um, but for now, we need to know that it's accessible at a certain point. And that's when our conscious mind can access the subconscious and can change its quote-unquote programming, if you will, right? Now, since the subconscious mind runs about 95% of our life activity on autopilot, you may have thought and guessed, hey, um, our conscious mind is responsible for the other 5%. Now, these, these conscious thoughts and activities that are responsible for the other 5% are opposed to the deep-seated beliefs running and in, in our subconscious, right? Um, the, the conscious is the part of our mind that we're aware of. It's the part that we actively think with. But it doesn't direct our life in a real sense of the word because everything it does is as a, a thought-producing, surface-oriented resource uh, for us, in a way, right? And by surface-oriented, I mean it helps us with things like deciding what to eat or to wear, and it helps us figure out math and just stuff. We're actively thinking, so it, it helps us do stuff. But it doesn't map our path in life, and it does... Uh, uh, not make our reality closely conform to our self-image, which is a good topic for another video. Actually, maybe we'll do that next. I'll think about it. Uh, interestingly, when we think about uh, using our thinking mind, right? Uh, when we actually start thinking, it takes us inward. As a result, the subconscious mind is no longer running its programs, quote unquote, so it's no longer controlling us. 
Uh, that should give us a hint about the, how the subconscious mind works, right? But because uh, when we start to focus on conscious thought, it disconnects the subconscious, right? And when we're no longer thinking consciously, the subconscious re-engages. So keep in mind, I mean, mindset is everything. So we need to be thinking about what we're thinking about, right? And please keep all that in mind as we go into the next video. And yeah, I think we'll do that. We'll talk about self-image and personality. Thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.